Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to build a transition in Apple Motion and publish it to Final Cut. You probably are very familiar with all of the transitions that come with Final Cut Pro, and you probably have some transitions that you've purchased from third party vendors. But did you know you can just build your own in Apple Motion if you have it? This technique is a little more advanced, but I think you're ready for it. If you're not super comfortable with motion, I do have a course on my website, jenjager.com, called Motion Launchpad, and it really is like a kickstart for anyone who really wants to learn motion. So this tutorial right now builds on that. Let's just dive right into this tutorial. Okay, let's open Apple Motion. And of course we get the project browser window. And this time, you know, usually I bring you right here to a motion project. Let's pick this one here, Final Cut Transition. Let's head on up to the preset window. And I'm gonna change my frame rate here to 24 frames per second. I'm working in 4K and the duration of my project is going to be one second long. Now, if you've ever used a transition in Final Cut, which you probably have, you know that you can change the duration of transitions in Final Cut. And you'll still be able to do that with what we're building in motion today. But I like to just make the transition one second by default. So when we're playing with it in motion, we get a real good sense of how that uh, transition will look when you apply it at the one second default in Final Cut. All right, let's hit open. All right, so now this is what a Final Cut transition project looks like in motion. Let's first and foremost save this transition. So let's head on up to file, save as, and it's going to ask us to name this template. I'm going to call this gradient zoom. Your next option is category. The category is like the family of transitions that this new transition is going to live in. So if you haven't yet created a category for transitions, and you probably haven't if you're watching this tutorial, you can head down to the bottom of this menu here and select new category, but I already have a category for myself going. And then the next option you have is the theme. The theme is sort of a subset of transitions within this bigger family. And I'm gonna put this one here, blurs and gradients. All right, we're going to hit the publish button and it's gonna think for a second. And now we're gonna move on and actually work in this project. So let's take a look at what we've got here. In our project pane, we already have a group. And within that group are these two fields here, transition A and transition B. A is green, B is red. And down here in our timeline, you can see that transition A lasts right up until about the 13th frame and transition B starts at the 12th frame and goes to the end of our timeline. But what does this all mean? To be honest with you, I do think that the way they've named these elements is kind of confusing because the entire project is a transition. So why is it called transition A and transition B? I'm gonna clear that up for you and you're never gonna get confused by this again. You wanna think of transition A, that clip, as your outgoing clip in Final Cut in your timeline. So if this is your timeline, right, and it's playing left to right, the first clip before your transition is your outgoing clip. And your next clip is your incoming clip. So think about transition A in here in motion as your outgoing clip and transition B as your incoming clip. That will always keep it straight for you in your head. So just ignore what says transition A and B. Think about it as your outgoing clip and your incoming clip. All right, the next thing I like to do is drop in some clips as placeholders in our project because it's really hard to get a sense of what you're doing and what your transition looks like if you don't actually have a shot in there. So these transition elements actually are pretty much like drop zones. I'm just gonna drop in a couple clips here so we can see what our transition is going to look like as we build it. So I've started with the shot of this highway and then I've got this glacier. And so you can see here, if I just play in my timeline, right now we have just a straight cut. There's no transition there, there's no action, there's nothing happening. So now let's start building our transition using the tools that are available to us in motion. If you've watched any of my tutorials, if you've taken my course, you know all about filters, behaviors, keyframing, everything. So you can use all of those ideas and apply them to a transition to get the custom look that you want. So now we can apply any of those elements, filters, behaviors, keyframes to the group, and that will affect both our outgoing and incoming clip. Or we can apply filters, behaviors, or transform the properties of just the individual clips themselves. Let's first start with the group. I'm going to add some keyframes on the scale of the group. 
So I'm going to queue up my playhead to the four frame mark, and I'm going to make a keyframe here on scale, and I'm going to leave that value at 100. Now I'm gonna jump on over to the ninth frame in our project, and I'm going to change that scale value, thereby creating a new keyframe to 267%. And then I'm going to head over to the 13th frame and I'm going to change that value back to 100. Again, select it on that group. Let's head down to the keyframe editor and change the interpolation of these keyframes. Right now they're linear. You can see that these are straight lines. We're going to select all those keyframes in the keyframe editor. If you're not seeing the keyframe editor, you want to hit these three diamonds here at the top of your timeline to reveal it. I've selected them all and I know that because all of my keyframes down here are now white. I'm just going to right click on one of them and this is going to apply to all and I'm going to hit ease both and now we've got more of a curved interpolation. So that's our first step. The next thing I'm going to do is add a gradient overlay within this bigger group. So I'm going to head on over to library. We're going to go to generators. We're going to go down to gradient and I'm going to drop it into my group above transition A, our outgoing shot. I'm going to head on over to the inspector, drop down on the gradient menu here, and I'm just going to play with the start and end points and get a very like feathered look by changing the X and Y values on the start and end points. And I really want it to be kind of at an angle. And I'm just sort of eyeballing this here. Okay, that looks good. Now I wanna change the color of my gradient. So I'm going to head over to this first box here in my swatch, and I'm going to make this kind of an orangey tone. And then let's head on over to the blue color. And we're going to make this more of like a teal. We're going to go classic orange and teal look here. Now, of course, right now I'm concealing both my outgoing and incoming shots. Let's head over to properties selected on that gradient. We're going to change the blend mode to add. And now we're getting something. Now I need to think about how this is going to look when I actually apply it to a clip in Final Cut. So the way I have it now, where the gradient is just full opacity right from the start, what would happen in my transition is that it would go from normal color to all of a sudden having a gradient overlay on it. And I don't want that. I want something much smoother. So I'm going to keyframe the opacity of this gradient. So queued up to the very beginning of my transition, we're going to be selected on gradient in our project pane, head over to opacity. I'm going to make this value zero. Then we're going to jump to the 12th frame right at the midway point in our transition. And I'm going to change that value to 100, creating a new keyframe. And then we're going to go all the way to the end. And we're going to change that opacity again to zero. So the gradient's gonna come up and go away. And again, I'm gonna head down to my keyframe editor, hit Command A to select all of my keyframes, right click and ease both. All right, now let's draw our attention to our outgoing shot and do some things with this. I'm gonna select transition A in my project pane and we're going to apply a Gaussian blur to this outgoing clip. So I'm going to select it in my project pane, head on over to filters. Let's go down to blur, Gaussian blur. It's got a very subtle blur on it as a default, but if I actually publish this to Final Cut the way that it is, again, the shot would go from crystal clear to slightly blurred with no easing at all. So I'm gonna add some keyframes here. I'm actually gonna queue up my playhead to the five frame mark, and I'm going to add a keyframe on the amount line on the blur. We're gonna put that value to zero. Then let's go all the way to the end of transition A and change that amount value to 300, creating another keyframe. And let me scrub and show you. See, now the shot's getting very blurry. But we still have that very abrupt cut between the highway shot and the glacier. So how are we gonna remedy that? I'm actually gonna add a fade out behavior on the outgoing shot. So what I'm going to do here is select it in my timeline. Let's head over to behaviors, basic motion, fade in and fade out. Now I do not want this shot to fade in because think about what would happen in Final Cut. It would be fully opaque and then all of a sudden you would have a black screen. So I don't want it to fade in here. I'm gonna change the fade in time to zero and I'm going to change the fade out time to just three frames. And we can see here in my keyframe editor that we start to fade all the way back here. But the problem is, is that my incoming shot, see this in my timeline? It doesn't even exist yet. So believe it or not, we can move this second shot back a few frames 
And then I want to make sure I extend it to the end of my project. And now see, we get a gradual fade. All right, that's what our transition is gonna look like, but how do we bring it into Final Cut? Before I show you that, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, before we bring this into Final Cut, I do wanna show you one other step we wanna take. We wanna clear out the placeholder media that we have been using to build this template. So what we're going to do is select Transition A. We're gonna go over to Image in our Inspector window and we're just going to hit Clear. And we're going to go to transition B and hit clear. And so now we're back to just kind of an empty shell of a transition. And then I'm going to save this command S because we already saved the project at the beginning. We already gave it a theme. We already gave it a category. You don't have to do anything else. And then we're just going to head on over to final cut. And here in my timeline, I have those exact same two shots and we're going to take our gradient zoom and drop it in between those two shots. It looks exactly as we expected, but if I select this transition, head on over to the inspector, I don't have any customization here in my transition. And maybe that's fine for you. Maybe you never wanna change the properties of this transition, but I will say whenever I'm working with colors, like we've added this gradient to this transition, I like to be able to modify those in Final Cut. So we can do that. Let me show you how. We're gonna head back over to Motion I'm going to head over to the gradient in my project pane. I'm going to select first that orange color swatch. And over here, I'm gonna hit this drop down, and I'm going to select publish. Then I'm going to select this teal one. And again, select this drop down and hit publish. And then if we wanna see what we can modify when we bring this into Final Cut, you're gonna head up to the top of your project pane, select the project line, and then head over to project in your inspector window. And now you can see the colors of my gradient are here in my published parameters. We can actually do more in this project pane. This is something that I really love. We can rename these elements. So right now it just says color. I'm gonna change this to say top left. And I'm going to change this one here just by double clicking the word color to bottom right. That way it's crystal clear to us what part of the gradient we're changing every time we modify these colors in Final Cut. Again, Command S to save it. We're gonna head back to Final Cut. And here's what our timeline looked like when we last left it. You actually need to like clear out that transition to refresh it. And we're gonna reapply. And now look here in my gradient zoom, there are my gradient colors, just as I named them. I'm just gonna arrow into the center of my transition and we can change these gradient colors to whatever we want. And even if we extend the length of our transition, the transition still works. So that's how you create a Final Cut Pro transition in Apple Motion. I know you learned something in this video. Let me know down in the comments what you loved, what you wanna see again. Make sure to check out Motion Launchpad if you're still getting comfortable with Motion. I think it's really gonna help you. Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. I picked out other videos I know you're really gonna love. I'll see you again.